So yeah, I uh, kind of wanted to show y'all. I hope I don't know how good y'all can see. Let me see if I can get at an advantageous angle. So today I'm out here being a little uh, overseer. Y'all see them bees in there? Let me see if I zoom. Let's zoom. Wait a minute. See, this is when you when your stuff be too fandanga. You get too carried away. But can y'all see? It's a bunch of bees out here. Like, can y'all? Oh, yeah, you can see over there. You see how those? See about four or five of them. So the bees out here are working. And um, I've got my little whip and I'm making sure they stay at it, okay? Make sure they get their weight in pollen. If they don't, it's going to be a problem. Let's see. But yeah, everything is looking so good. Ain't that pretty, y'all? Uh, it's real pretty. The other day I was out here and it was even more bees than this. It was about 20 or 30 of them. Um, and I see all of them. I see bumblebees. Ooh, there's so many up there. Golly. With the naked eye, you can see them better. But anyway, it was bumblebees, mason, masonry bees, and honeybees. I see a lot of masonry bees and honeybees today. I don't see any bumbles. But they may have been earlier. They may come out later. I don't know. Hey, you, you. You flying around too much. I need you on that flower. I need you to be working. You need to be working. But look. I think I see. Now oh, that's a masonry bee too. Bumbles are really big, y'all. Really big. Ooh, look at all the little pollen on their little legs. Make sure you get your weight in pollen now. Because I'll be weighing your little pollen sacks later. anyway I wanted to kind of show y'all that I ain't really got a whole lot else going on out here uh, the beans are looking pretty good they have grown a nice size and a lot of those watermelons have come up and then also the red mustards as you can see and at this size you could take them and use them in your salad but I'm going to let those get a little bigger and I'm, I may thin when I thin I'll, I'll eat those little plants that are thin. Uh, these are looking good. The uh, let me go there. Okay. These are looking good. These are some starts that I bought from Walmart. Some little Bonnie starts. I got some sage. And then I think this is Italian oregano. Yeah, it's Italian oregano. I don't know if y'all can read that through that green. But um, I haven't put them in the ground yet. Let me show y'all this. Wow. Y'all ever seen a snail shell that big? I've never seen one that big before. But that just lets you know. My soil is on and popping because it's growing this stuff. None of those beans came up. They just rotted in the ground. So I'm going to plant something else in here but in the meantime I'm gonna get that weed out um yeah none of those uh, uh and then I don't know what that is that look like that's something but anyway none of that came up those are looking good my peppers are still growing um A bunch of those uh, uh, ground tomatoes germinated. I got a bunch of onions going to seed right here, y'all. So my onion seed collection should be good. Look at these. I got two little seed heads. Those are going to seed. Those are going to seed. So understand I, the onions that are going to seed are the ones that I harvested and put back. So I did that on purpose. That was purposeful. But as you can see, I got a bunch of heads over here too. So you can see see all those heads and they'll make flowers and presumably when those flowers over there the collards are done 
these will really start opening up. They're already opening and they have their little pollen things. Uh, you can pollinate them yourself by doing just rubbing across them like that. Um, I don't know if y'all can see. Can't see the pollen on my thumb, but um, if you rub across them like that real gently, you can pollinate them. But you really don't need to. The bees will do it for you. These beans in here are starting to look like something a little bit. I think I had some cut worms or something bite some of them down. I had some of them the tops was bit off. See the bird cut worm or something. But um, the Swiss chard is looking good. Down here though, these stems were still green, so I got a little, a lot of the leaves. See how wet that is. You don't want too much of those because sometimes that may cause that stem to rot and it may be slow to put up a uh, new leaves. So you do want want that part to, you know, kind of breathe. This right here is looking okay other than the ants. Um, I don't know if you see that's low and that's ants have built up all around there. So um, I have put diatomaceous earth several times, but it keeps raining and rain is in the forecast again. So um, they're not necessarily gonna kill the kale, but they move the stuff around the dirt sometimes away from your roots and your plants suffer. That rose looks so good over there. It's filling out quite nicely. Don't say nothing about how I need to mow. I already know I'm gonna mow soon. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna get something for those ants. I've got to step it up a notch cause they, they tested my gangster. Um, <laughs> Let's see, seven minutes. Child, I don't, oh, that's one of them mosquito hawks. I was gonna say, I don't know what that is, but you got to go. Um, <laughs> so, this mulberry leafed out really nicely. Unfortunately, I don't see any fruits. Maybe I'm not gonna get fruit just yet, maybe. This is the first time these have ever bloomed. I planted those. Somebody gave me those out of their garden and I subsequently planted them. I'm gonna cut some of this out of here because uh, this is this is privet, Chinese privet. It's, a, it's like an invasive kind of shrub thing. It's so hard to get rid of. Very, very hard to get rid of. Um, you cut it and you cut it and you cut it. And then some of this is stuff that fell from above. You get this crap out the way. That's, that's going to make some pretty soil. Let's go in the compost. I'm just... That's a thick piece there. There we go, so... Just try to keep this stuff cut back away from this mulberry and hopefully if I cut it enough and cut it frequent enough, it'll go ahead and die. If you cut the top out of a plant enough and it can't produce photosynthesis the way it should, this is hard. It will eventually die. I don't know what this little tree is, but it's not part of my uh, maypop, so I don't want it. Um, let me not pull that too much. That may fall. But yeah, y'all, so. Uh-oh, let me not kick my little flowers. I'm going to take y'all back here right quick to uh, show y'all some stuff that's going on and happening. It's not really much happening today. I just happened to see those bees and I stood out there. Oh, it is so tranquil. I stood out there. I don't know, maybe 10 minutes just staring at them. And I said, hmm, I need to get something done. <laughs> but um, the birds ain't so loud today. They ain't screaming at me today. Uh, also, if I see stuff that I need to cut down, this is more privet. I go ahead and cut it. Well, I got my pruners in my pocket. This is wild blackberry. Don't want it. 
more privet. This little spot where I'm at actually used to be nothing but privet. It had just grown up in here. The people had just let it just get out of control. And these are butterfly pleurisy roots you see me cutting off. So I'm cutting all this little stuff off that ain't about a lot of that. I'm gonna do a scratch test on. That is dead, at least the top is. <clears throat> Cut it off right there. If it come back, it's gonna come back somewhere below that. This one too, I'm sure is it. That one's dead. Um, my guava is coming in nicely. The little leaves. I'm not sure. But yeah, that's alive. So if you ever wonder about your trees, if they're alive, scratch them. It don't hurt to scratch a little of that bark up. It'll heal over. This is more privet. This is where it was a big privet bush right, there, right here. And like I said, I keep it cut and mold. So all of this was complete brush when I moved here. So um, it's a little new growth on the figs. The figs are growing nice. But I did notice that little new growth there. There's some new growth coming in down there, so it's good to see some new growth on this. I see a little shoot coming out there. On the kumquat, it looks like I see them right at the leaf nose wanting to bud out. So there's some little new growth in there. So that'll be putting on some growth soon. Um, I wanted to show you the difference in a mature pear tree versus... Well, I say that. Look at this. I just shot that a couple of days ago where I showed y'all. Let me bring this down. I just shot that a couple of days ago where I showed y'all those pears. Look how much they've swollen already. And that's only been a couple of days ago. So what I want to do is this branch is dead all the way out to a certain point. I guess I'm taking y'all on the tour of the stuff I got to do out here. So I do cut the dead out of my trees because first of all, it's barbecue wood. Second of all, dead wood ain't doing nothing. So you might as well cut it out. How do you know it's dead? See that little growth? Wait till it starts to try to grow and then you'll kind of know where it's dead and where it's not. That was still living, but it's all right. It's a little bitty little. It's not gonna matter, that's dead. If you cut in there and it's completely brown, nothing, it was dead. Um, and don't be afraid. That whole thing's dead. Don't be afraid if you cut out something living. It'll probably just push more growth. But be careful at this time of year when you have fruit on your trees. Because if you're not paying attention and you cut, you may cut some of your fruit off. Now, is that the end of the world? No. I think this is dead. Um, is that the end of the world? No, but you want fruit, right? At least I do. Uh, I wanted to touch on this right quick. A lot of people wonder, should you knock all the fruit off your trees if they're young or whatever? My thought on that is if a tree is fruiting, I'm going to put it to you like this. You know your body or your life more than anybody else. Nobody else can tell you about your life and your body. So if the tree is putting on fruit, it might can carry it. If it's not going to carry it, it'll get rid of it on its own. People are like, oh, that slows the roots down or whatever, whatever. I don't buy into that. Um, you don't know what it's doing above or below ground. If it looks healthy and the fruit looks healthy, I say let it stay. I let the tree do what it wants. I don't intervene too much. Nature knows more than I do, especially about itself, because there's a lot of factors that you cannot see. So this, as hard as I don't know what, but I wanted to show y'all some of these pears. They're pretty swollen. I was going to say that since this tree is mature, the, the pears are getting bigger faster, but... I don't necessarily think that anymore because I looked at the other tree and some of those are looking quite nice and big and full. I also wanted to show you all where I grafted. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Let me bring it down some. Look 
Come on now, there we go. Maybe. Hold on, let me put my pruners down. So, the light out here is terrible today. So, can y'all see that bud? That, so, that bud is pushing through. It has pushed through and it's going to pop out. So, that graft apparently took, which is great. So, looks like I have some success on a lot of my grafts, which is good because the first time, oh, I'm telling you, I was completely um, not feeling it that my first grafts didn't work out. I know it was my first time, but oh, I don't like it when things don't work out. At least simple things like that. Okay, got all that cut out. Get this oak tree out of here. Here's the longevity spinach coming back, so I'll cut this dead part off. But here's it coming back. So the longevity spinach is in there, people. And I see some more leaves over here coming back. So longevity spinach comes back a lot like how your peppers come back. Um, the roots are under there and they kind of, the stems kind of emerge a little bit from below the soil line. Um, so they're similar in that way. Cut this. See all this little stuff. Try to clean up and get all this little stuff, this crap out of the way. Because some of this I just broke off. And I didn't ever really cut it. And so it was still just kind of here in the way. So yeah, your longevity spinach. Don't worry about it. That limb fell. I need to get it out of there, but I need to get this oak out of here, too. And this is freaking honeysuckle. Tear that off. I like honeysuckle, but I don't want it everywhere. I need to cut this, too. More privet. Over here was a... I'm sorry, y'all. I ain't showing y'all nothing. Over here was a big stand of privet, too. This was all brush, y'all my whole yard there's an old video you can go back and look at where i showed clearing like some of the last parts of the yard and when i tell y'all so much of this was just ugh, just overgrown and it was a mess so i got all my blackberries and my grapes my muscadines are right there the other grape is right there and it is alive i thought it was dead it's alive it just hasn't leafed out yet the muscadine it hasn't leafed out yet, but it's alive too. These are, all these are blackberries. My raspberry died. I'm contemplating on getting another raspberry, but I did. I put cardboard under here and I mulched too. I still have to put pine straw all right here. So I got a lot of pine straw in the front yard. I'm going to put over all that cardboard. The cardboard helps to kill the weeds. And then the pine straw and thick mulch helps prevent them from come, coming back. Or at least coming back so soon. Um, it's a woodpecker in this tree. I can hear it. Um, so this is Smilax. And I always cut those. This time of year they get big. There's a privet that's getting big. So all of this stuff, when you live in the kind of environment I live where it used to be a lot of brush you have a lot of saplings that are persistent that want to come back so if you buy land like this that was wooded previously um if you're diligent you can keep it maintained but you ouch must be diligent smilax is annoying as hell anybody that knows anything about smilax oh and they say it's edible but mine tastes terrible um and i couldn't really find a, a bunch of huge medicinal benefits for it so i don't eat my smilax I just cut it down. The thorns are wicked. It's just, it, it's tenacious. It, it's, it grows by way of a rhizome in the ground. And um, uh, it's a huge rhizome over here. It looks like, it looks like ginger, but it's like the size of four or five watermelons. I mean, it's like huge, 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 hard rhizomes. Like you can see some of, it's too many leaves over here. I will show y'all. But maybe when some of these leaves subside and stuff, I can show y'all. But it's it's some of like this is the biggest rhizome that I have. Like you see right here, 
where all of these new ones are growing up. And like I said, if you keep them cut, you can you can you can pretty much kill smilex over time. It takes a long time. You can try to dig the rhizome up. It grows just like asparagus, if I'm not mistaken. It's in the asparagus family. Um, eventually, if you keep it cut when it's young and tender, it's just like asparagus. It's real soft. But if you let it get big and really grow up into your trees, I had vines. Let me show you this vine. Show y'all. It's dead now because I cut it off from the ground. But you see how this is? This is how my whole yard was. Can y'all see that twisted vine right there that looks like Tarzan vine? I'm going to go put my hand on that so y'all can show y'all how big that is. So this is the base of it right here. This is how big Smilax can get. And when I tell you it goes way, way, way up there, you can hang on that vine. And it will hold you. It'll hold, well, it'll hold my weight. And I'm not light. So <laughs> if it'll hold me, it'll hold just about anything. This is how big crepe myrtles can get if you let them. This is my hand. These crepe myrtles are like 50 years old. So those of you in the Carolinas, my crepe myrtles, well, these back here, because they get shaded out, they don't they don't bloom as pretty, but there's some big trees. I know Carolinas, I think South Carolina especially, is known for their crepe myrtles. But one more thing I'm gonna show y'all in the greenhouse, and then I'm headed in. I see the, um, I forget what this is called, but it makes silver, silver thorn. But it makes a freaking berry in the fall time. And mine kind of gets shaded out. But it makes a really tasty berry that tastes like a sweet tart. So if you could ever get silver thorn, I have some more of it over there. That's the only reason why I didn't cut it down because it makes a really good berry. Mine never made berries. My neighbors down the street did, but his were in full sun. I'm wondering if they need full sun to make berries. Not sure though. Maybe they're making berries and the birds are getting them. So I really don't have anything new in here to show y'all other than I had some mulberry cuttings, some uh, white mulberry cuttings. Okay, I don't have nothing in this pot, so guess what? I don't need no clover in here. So these mulberries, the Pakistans, they're leafing out nicely. Guama cheese is still alive, but they haven't leafed out. But what I did over here was I took my white mulberry and I stuck them in here. And if you can see, they're pushing, a lot of them are pushing fruit. So I just have them covered with this plastic to keep um, a lot of the moisture and stuff in. Once again, my um, goji berries are fruiting. And uh, those onions look good. The callaloo looks good. The wild blackberries. I'm, I'm going to let them do their thing. No bees have been in here. But they may not. There's some little, I see some white fly in here. That, that'll that probably be all right then. They'll probably do their thug thizzle. Um, it's been kind of cool. Look out that one okra to germinate. It's more okra seeds in there. I haven't seen any come up. This is growing so fast, whatever this is. Like I said, they told me it was jicama. That's not jicama at all. It's not jicama. I got to get these out of there into some bigger pots. You can see the Zapotec tomato. Mushroom basket still only got two. Um, a roast con pollo pepper. I might sow some more seeds in those other spots. I would like to at least have two plants. This is uh, ahi dulce. So I got three of those and that's a little onion. I'm going to leave it. This is a long sweet reds. I don't think I think all of those died except for maybe like one plant. Not sure what that is. That's something. But yeah y'all so that's a quick little tour that I'm giving y'all for today uh -oh. so y'all got to walk around while i did a little little yard maintenance when i cut up all that stuff i'm gonna drag it all over here and burn it see all this privet i gotta cut down see once again you gotta stay on top of stuff it's not easy but if you don't do it you're gonna wish you had them you're gonna wish you had them because if you don't stay on top of it, it grows up on you so fast. And next thing you know, you, you got a forest again. I'm gonna come in and cut those with some loppers. I ain't gonna cut those on camera with y'all. But um, but yeah, the Celeste getting figs. There's a fig there. There's a fig there. I see another one coming. 
So three, four, five figs, some on that. My little dirt. The ants decided to make an ant mound real quick. This is wet, moist, warm weather drives the ants crazy and they just, just overnight, they make mounds. Um, so, but yeah, y'all, everything's looking good and I appreciate y'all for watching. Until next time, see you guys later.